Dunham, uh, they had a liaison uh, with the Chicago School District, and one of her dancers used to teach in Chicago. And the school I went to, we had a dance program. And my dance teacher said, well, are you all interested in dancing in college? I said, yeah. So we started taking classes from Lucille Ellis, who was a, a member of Mrs. Dunham's professional company. So um, in working and talking with Ms. Dunham and Ms. Ellis, was a number of us came, came from Chicago to study Dunham technique. So I've been here since 1975. In 19, uh, we taught, we taught, um, part of our training was to teach after school programs like what I'm doing now, which was part of our work study to teach dance. We taught senior citizens, we taught high school, we taught Head Start, Head Start we taught elementary school, we taught handicapped students. I mean, we, I, we had all kind of training. Um, but from then, um, I graduated in 1979 from the university here. Um, in 1983, Janetta, Janetta, Janetta Haley became the director of the East St. Louis Center. The program was at a standstill. And when Ms. Haley came in, she decided that the program was very vital and it needed to be, it still needed to be in East St. Louis. And she said, I'm not going to bring anybody on staff unless I can bring you all at 100%. And so I'm so grateful for Ms. Haley uh, in um, finding funds for us to be here and to be able to retire from this university. We retired from this university. I retired in 2012. And such a great experience. I learned, um, I studied with Al C. Wilkes from the, the uh, campus up here. Wonderful person. Him and his wife, Nancy, loved them both. So that's a little bit about me. But in, in, in studying with Ms. Dunham, we, we managed to tour a lot. Uh, with the company, and it was very hard to get in the company. I struggled, I fought, I fought, hey, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get in this company because <laughs> I wanted to. So from me uh, studying and training with Ms. Dunham, I got a chance to perform at Carnegie Hall. And it was a very, it was, it was such a uh, experience that I, I, I can't even explain because when you, when the curtains open and you see all these people in, out there, it's just, it's amazing. Um, so I've, I've done a lot with Ms. Dunham and I appreciate Ms. Dunham uh, and her staff for the training that I got. And so a lot of these students you see here, ladies, ladies, All these students you see here, I've trained their parents. Every last one of these students, um, their parents were a part of our dance company. And so now their students, their children are now studying with us. I don't know what Bob attended. Yeah, we'll okay. Well, uh, that's enough about me, but it's a wonderful program, and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have traded it for anything because what Ms. Dunham has given me has has really uh, changed my life and um, taught me discipline and taught me about life, about training, and um, and that's enough about me. <laughs> Anybody got a question? You got a question you want to ask me? Yes, ma'am. I do. I know that you um, are a member, were or are a member of the Unity Dance Ensemble, and I'm wondering if you could explain what that is exactly. Oh, Unity Theater Ensemble. Right. I used to be the choreography for Unity Theater Ensemble, which was uh, ran by Mr. Ralph Green. Mm -hmm. uh, Ralph Green was the theater director. And Mr. Green came with Ms. Dunham from SIU Carbondale. 
they both came together. And Mr. Uh, Ralph Green, he was over the theater, and Ms. Dunham was over the dance. So when Mr. Green decided to leave SIU to, do, to venture out into his own uh, theater company, I was so pleased and excited that he asked me to be his choreographer. So I, I managed to choreograph a lot of his productions that he had uh, at the Ivory Theater, at the St. Louis, um, at the Sheldon Theater. No, his theater company was over on St. Louis University, on St. Louis Avenue, yeah. Yeah. where the old black rep used to be. Mr. Green was there first. Yeah, 23rd Street Theater, thank you. So um, he taught all, we took theater class from Mr. Green, so we had to take theater. So Ms. Donna made sure we took drumming, you had to drum, you had to take dance class, you had to take anthropology class, you had to take music class, you had to take, um, yeah, we had karate, Sorry. we had fencing, you know, you had to take fencing. So she introduced, she would bring in artists from all over the world, and we would train with these with these artists. So we we had a a chance to train with a lot of uh, African, mm -hmm. uh, Swedish ballet company. Uh, we even had we even trained the football team when we have they have the football team here. They used to come over and take classes from us. So <laughs> it was it was just uh, it was a, a great learning experience, and I. I think the kids are going to uh, really show you all some some little bit of what we're doing, what Miss Dunham's technique is about. Jack. Okay. Thank you, Miss. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank you very much. Yeah. I'll just piggyback off what Miss Smythe said a little bit about myself. I came on the scene between '69 and '70. I was a street dancer. This man named Archie Savage recruited me. Long story short, I didn't want to go to class. But I followed him the following week, Archie Savage and Linwood Morris, a ballet instructor, which I didn't know neither one of them, how famous they were. I was down in East St. Louis. And Mr. Morris said, I heard, um, he said, Mr. Savage said he told you to report to class. And I said, yeah, and? He said, I'll tell you, he's so proper. I said, I'll tell you what, young man, at 5.30, you'll, you'll be in that building at 5.30 sharp. Now I'm thinking to myself, who's this cat? But lo and behold, I went, because curiosity got to me. And I was, I was a street dancer, but you know, I, I, I had the passion to dance, but now as a professional. And I saw the drumming and the girls and the drummers and everything. It was, it was, I was really uh, amazed. So I went there and I looked at it. But anyway, long, once again, long story short, I, I, I got in there and I had two left feet. I couldn't do what they was doing. So I said, oh, this ain't nothing. You know, I, I got, I, I'm doing my own thing. But I kept going back. And I worked and worked and worked real hard, you know, thanks to Mr. Mr. Morris and Mr. Savage. I know I say I didn't know who Miss Dunham was at the time, you know. I didn't know who any of the instructors were, because the instructors were the company from the 30s and 40s. We had these masters there: Mr. Morris, Tommy Gomez, uh, Lucy Ellis, Lucy Ellis uh, Clifford Fears, Van Nord Akins. These are names that Miss Dunham had back in the 30s and 40s. These people came to East St. Louis to work with us. I guess because Ms. Dunham had so much clout then, she could bring these people on board, her, her old company on board. And we got some real hardcore training. I mean, like the military. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And again and again and again. Until everything became second nature. My first experience was going to, uh, when she did Wolf Trap in Virginia, Trimonitia. That, that was an original opera. Once again, I'm green, so I don't, know I'm, I don't know what I'm stepping into. But as time went on, you know, it made history. And I was part of that, you know, the original uh, opera of Um I was there from 70 to, I think, 75. And I started the family, so I left for a little while. But the desire, the desire was still there, so I came back about five years later and got back into the program. I started retraining myself and started traveling with Miss Smythe and the rest of the company. I would say our program starts from the ages of from six to seventeen, and like she said, we work from anywhere from uh, Head Start to Senior Citizens. And we done travel throughout the United States quite a bit, which is kind of grueling. Someone asked me about 
that we didn't get a chance to enjoy where we were. But we only have maybe have about an hour of break. So we never did, even though we traveled, it sounds good, you know, it sounds fantastic, but it was just hitting in and out, in and out. This city, that city. Go to the next city, come on back, rehearse, rehearse, do your thing, go to bed. That's how it was. That's the dancer's life. <laughs> yeah. And um as each one of uh, our masters retired, the whole thing that Mr. Delman's legacy was to train us and have us keep the program going from generation to generation to the next generation. So we got blessed to step in the, into our master's shoes and teach what they taught us and kept the program going. Now due to funding, I think in 2012, we had a short break in there, 2012 about 2015. So we've been, we've been back about, about three years now with the help of uh, Jesse Dixon, I'll say even I get Randy, Mary Joy, all of them been a big, you know, a big plus for us to bring our program back. We started in the summer of 2015. This is our second season at the after school program. So we're starting to rebuild it again. We start, kind of starting from scratch. But we're going to do our best to bring it back to the community. Any questions? Okay. Baba. Baba Tudor. You say cut. Oh, that right. This, this, this too is. One yes. of our students. I took this young man. I know you're not bashful. <laughs> I don't know if you all remember the show, Putting on the Hits. It was, oh, yeah, TV it was on show. television. It was a television show. About, okay. about 20 well, years ago. I took ago. him and there's about six other young dancers. And they got selected to do Putting on the Hits. <coughs> and they won $6,000. They came in second place. <laughs> So I'm just saying to say, to say he's one of our students and he now is also one of our instructors. He is our master drummer instructor. You all are going to have a real treat once uh, once you get to see him with the kids. He has a, a, real, a real nice presentation for you guys. So without that, without further ado, we'll start our presentation. Dancers. <laughs> a denim presentation, the movement, you will see isolations, and you see progressions. The denim presentation is Miss Denham's signature <coughs> signature position. Catherine Dunham, who is she? Dancer, choreographer, writer, author, painter. Educator, anthropologist, social activist, humanitarian. Catherine Dunham, two of 51 different countries, five continents. Um, ooh, I was about to say something. <laughs> so I had a brain freeze. But um, without further ado, Papa. <laughs>
Precious. Very good, lady. Very good. these young people I've only I they just brought me back thank you uh, but that I've only I've only this is two weeks this is two weeks with me if you see them next year at this time you wouldn't believe it'd be the same set of people but I appreciate them and they've done very very well thank you ladies thank you now you get ready to see them okay while they're, they're getting ready to set up for their drum presentation, so uh, Mr. Williams is going to speak. As the kids said earlier, you know, uh, one of them, Ms. Nell Minnie has was an anthropologist. She went to uh, Joliet Junior uh, College, and she decided to go to Chicago and follow her brother. And one of her classes was anthropology, and she got intrigued about, you know, Africa. So with that, she um, traveled to the West Indies Islands, and her favorite island was Haiti. That's where the dumb technique really originated from, because the people from Haiti and other islands had came from Africa. 
since she, at the time she couldn't travel that far, the closest place she could get to get that African tradition was Haiti, some other islands. So she got so um, intrigued about the Haitian people and their culture, especially this thing called Badum, we call it voodoo in America. And a lot of time in America culture thinks voodoo is, uh, you know, dealing with the devil and witchcraft. But in Haiti, they, they, it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual thing. And she really got into that. And she went there and wrote a thesis and, and got a fellowship to go back to study the, to study the technique, or study of the Haitian people. And with that, she brought the Dunham technique back. It has a little bit of jazz, ballet, modern. So she did, took all of that and formed the Dunham technique and formed her own company from the 1930s up to the 1950s. She came to East St. Louis in 1967. She was in Carbondale. I forgot how she went to Carbondale, but she went to Carbondale and she wanted to uh, reach out to rural kids. So East St. Louis and St. Louis was the closest to Carbondale. So she came here and hooked up with the East Saint, SIUE and came to East St. Louis <laughs> and walked the streets. We had the warlords back in the 60s. And so she found these gang members because the culture wasn't here. You know, she was a world famous dancer and all of that, but people here didn't know anything about Miss Dunham like I didn't. So she recruited gang members. I mean, really true thugs off the street, trying to show them a better way of life socially, you know, through the arts. That was her goal. You can turn this thing around through the arts. Even if you don't have the education, you, just, you still have talent and skills. So through the arts, she formed a performing arts training center. And that's where me and Miss Smythe comes in, you know. But I'll just give you a little background how she came here. And any, I would say any black school, dance school or anything, any performing arts school dealing with, with urban students in the community is an offshoot from Miss Dunham. Most of all the dancers I know that around me and Miss Dunham's, I mean me and Miss Mice uh, age came through Miss Dunham somewhere, some form of fashion. They got the knowledge, they got the technique, and they took it out and expanded to their own. So we're very grateful, and I'm very grateful now, let's say, to, to be blessed to um, go through Miss Dunham, have the opportunity to work a steady job at the university. I put 35 years in before, I, I mean, I put 33 before I retired, then I came right back. So I've been a total of 35, trying to carry the legacy on. But I need further ado, Baba today. We will be on our second leg, our second presentation. Yes, sir. Would you like to say something, Baba? Okay. Uh, I'd just like to say one thing. Uh, Baba, you have to come to the mic because they won't be able to pick you up. Uh, I just want to say one thing. Uh, I'm thankful to Miss Dunham for opening up the doors to a, a lot of brothers from the continent of Africa, mainly the western part of Africa. Because also with my studies of Dunham, I also studied traditional West African drum and dance uh, by way of some of the masters. Uh, Marcham, number one, Miss Dunham brought Marcham in and he kind of like sparked this ship off. A lot of people don't know that the traditional West African thing started right here in East St. Louis and in St. Louis with Miss Dunham and Marcham. And from there it spawned to a, a few sister groups and I'm part of one of those sister groups. So today is like a collaboration of family for me, okay? From the root, Miss Dunham, to the tree, the East St. Louis Ensemble, to me, Kumasi Kanban, which is part of these three entities, okay? So we're gonna do just a small presentation today, a little drum and dance today from West Africa. We're gonna do a piece called Kasunde. Kasunde is a West African dance that comes from West Africa. It's done by the Balanta people. It's, it's the dance of the cow hunters. These people are the cow hunters or they're herd. They, they are cattlemen, see, and that's all they do. You know what I'm saying? Sometime when the droughts come, these people even go and kind of like take other people cows. So they're kind of known for that. You know, just coming gangster. They kind of like gangsters. So uh, without further ado, we're going to do this dance. Plus, but for real, the dance is dance. It's a 
post harvest dance. So after the harvest, they dance this dance Kasunde. After they have a good harvest, they come and celebrate with this dance Kasunde. Okay? All right, so we're going to do the dance Kasunde.
through a performing arts youth group. Not only did we teach. Not only do we teach denim technique, we have ballet, jazz, hip hop, drums, piano, guitar, chimes. And they play drums too. And yeah, yeah. Hey, can we get can, can we get a little bit, Jeff? Can we get a little bit of drums? The girls. They only have two kids. Y'all had a stick. Oh, okay. You would miss out on the treat. Okay, well, next time we'll be ready. Okay. Girls, come over here, please. You want the girls to tell you how old they are? Tell them your name and how old you are. And what school you go to? My name is Ashiana and I, and I am nine and I go to Dumbo Elementary School. My name is London and I'm six and I go to West Haven School. My name is Lauren and I am seven years old and I go to Marie Schaefer. My name is Pillar and I'm eight years old and I go to Wolf Brand. My name is Dominique Williams and I'm and I'm eight years old and I go to Dunbar Elementary School. My name is Joey Vaughn and I'm nine years old and I go to St. Louis Language Immersion School. My name is Olivia Bell, I'm ten years old and I go to Mary Schaefer. My name is Nyla Battles, I am twelve years old and I go to Major Clark Middle School. My name is Elisa Williams, I'm sixteen years old, I go to East St. Louis Senior High School. Yeah. Now in the summer we have about anywhere from 80 to 125 kids in the summer, our summer camp. It usually runs six weeks. But once again I'd like to thank Jesse Dixon, <laughs> our director of the East St. Louis campus, for the vision to bring things back, you know. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Mary Jo, Randy, once again, yes, thank you for your support. Yeah. Baba Tudor, he has, you know, he has one, two, three, four children. Raise your hand. One, two, three, and four. All right. This young man here, he came in with his sisters to hang out. But he, but he saw the drums. How long have you been playing? Just a few weeks or a month or so, Baba? <laughs> you don't know. Like a couple of weeks. Yeah, but he's out here with us. See, I, I like that, you know. Within a month, he's playing the drums. Trying to, at least. <laughs> Our program, this is a free program. Our children don't pay anything. So... We're hoping to get more, which I'm sure we will. Now they know that I'm back, oh, yeah. that Miss Smythe is back. <laughs> but no, we're hoping that the next time you see our children, you'll be pleased. Well, I'm sure you're pleased now, but I mean, you'll see an uh, improvement. A little bit more technique, a little bit more enjoyment, right? Okay, all right, girls. Thank you all so much. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you very much.